Uh, all right, three, two, one. Hey guys, what's going on? And welcome to episode one hundred and forty the of the KB. <laughs> I didn't. You didn't even let me finish the goddamn title. This is not working out. This fucking roommate situation. By the way, this whole weekend I've been helping Nick Fenton move in to uh, Rishi's old spot, uh, old room. As uh, Nick is my new roommate. The date is it's May eleventh, two thousand and fourteen. We are a little Angelic. late. Happy are, Mother's uh, Day. Happy Mother's Day, indeed. From, happy Mother's Day from Jewish mother. <laughs> happy Mother's Day. <laughs> you look as good as when you came out of my vagina. <laughs> Bobby. Uh, anyway. Bobby. Um, okay, I, mean, I don't know. Is that a Jewish name? Traditional Jewish name. <laughs> very, very Robert. Funny. Robert Jewish. That's my name. Robert Jewish. <laughs> Um, but yeah, happy happy Mother's Day. Hopefully, you told your mother if you have one uh, that you love her. And um, yeah, we uh, we were a little late because Dan's uh, Dan's young son is uh, has the hives, but hopefully, should be okay. Allergic reaction. Yeah, I'm he's, assuming he's so. going to the emergency room, but he's like, yeah. you know, I don't foresee any problems. So he's a fighter. He's I mean, a he fighter, can't. So. He may, maybe he can't eat peanuts anymore. Mm. <laughs> right. Maybe that's it. Peanut allergies. Yeah, who knows? That's the most common one, though, right? I think. I peanuts, think peanuts and shellfish, probably. Shellfish. Common. Yeah. yeah. Mosquito yeah. bites is the most common. I love me some shellfish. God bless. God, God some shellfish. Gross. Gross. So yeah, we got a smaller cast. Brandon is in the air uh, right now, so he couldn't be here. And uh, mm. blah, who's staying at John's house? I think is just going out to dinner after. Finding an apartment, if I'm not mistaken. Swaggy blah, moving so, to San Fran. Yeah, smaller cast. Hex isn't here because we tried to even mention Hex, and everyone on the cast said, please, no, they wouldn't even <laughs> attend, you know, stay with us. So that's why Hex is not here. And um, yeah, so what, what have we uh, what have we been up to? Like I said, Nick, uh, Nick and I were moving. We finally oh, finished up. everything uh, today. A small message. Uh, we yes. are now sponsored in part by Blue yes. Microphones. So shout out to Blue Microphones. That's Massive it. Shout there outs. we go. That's our that's our one ad. And uh, <laughs> that's our as one per ad that, um, <clears throat> yes, we uh, we now have to be extremely careful about what we said. <laughs> Just fucking kidding. We can still <laughs> swear and all that stuff. Don't worry about it. Listen, uh, we got a re- we got a keyboard to review because a woman quote unquote liked our podcast show. <laughs> yes, so. yes. And I see someone qu- putting the question mark. Sark, Sark will be on the cast next week. He is planned for next week. He has confirmed that with me. I have it in writing in both email and text. Listen, I don't, don't think he wrote it. So, don't so. fucking bug Sark it. on Twitter. Yeah, and people. don't and don't, don't, don't bug do him that. on Twitter because for God knows the the man doesn't do podcasts. He doesn't the fact do that he podcasts. will do the KB Mod podcast does speak volumes uh, uh, for KB Mod. But please don't pester the poor man. But uh, he he should be here should be here next week. Uh, all, all, all things. Um, if all things work out, and I don't anticipate them not, so that'll be really exciting. Get hyped for that. Um, but this week you're just you're just stuck with you with us four bums. But <laughs> you know we've been we've been doing this so long. I think we've been doing okay. I uh, so yeah. Nick Nick has been uh, moved in. Still got to set up. I don't know. What do you have left to put in put in the room? Uh, we just need to run the Ethernet cable. I think I'm pretty much set. I need a chair. <laughs> I just have, I'm on a couch right now. So. Whimsy, thank you for the sub, sir. New sub. Oh, yeah, there we go. Nice. <laughs> Whimsy the Great. Yes, he had his own podcast that he was doing D&D on, but that was that was a podcast he was doing with his yeah. comedian friends anyway. I, I should know not to respond to Annie on uh, bait and <laughs> chat. True. I should just let it go. Pretty much what I should let do when go, I see... Let it go. Let it go. Can't yeah, hold it back anymore. When I see anything with Annie on, I should just not even, not even look at it. <laughs> but... Uh, <sighs> Yeah, it's been it's been uh, it's been quite a journey. We uh, rented a U-Haul van today, and yeah. uh, Nick drove it, and God bless, multiple times, almost killed us. On the Those things are hard to drive, dude. Yeah, they're at not one point, at one best. point, especially when you're drunk too. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. That might have been part of it. I told him. And I on said, PCP. I said, don't finish that fifth, and he said that he could and would be fine. And then so. I pulled out a bottle of Svetka, and I was like, yo. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It was funny when we pulled up to the U-Haul place, though. Uh, it was like there, there's guys that are just uh, a bunch of um, I'm gonna guess Mexican individuals were were standing there, and they were like, "Hey, you you need a truck? You need a truck? Someone to move?" And I was so confused. I was like, "No," but then I was thinking about it later, and I was like, "Why would 
<laughs> why would if you were going to U-Haul to rent something, why would you all of a sudden decide that you were going to take like, this? Mm, I'm going to go with these sketchy people. <laughs> let, me, let me go with this like, guy. I don't they know. Pointed, they pointed to their truck, <laughs> and it literally it looked like it was made of cardboard. <laughs> Yeah, I was like, anyway, it was it was odd. So we ended up just getting just getting the van. Uh, but yeah, that anyway. So that's done. The lease is signed, and we're I'm saddled with this fuck boy for a year. <laughs> so if you know, I don't really. If anything goes wrong, which I'm sure it will, uh, I can't complain because I did. We were both there when you we signed this. the lease. Yeah, so. you did this to yourself. I, mean, I did this. I did this to myself. So, <laughs> but uh, what have you? What have you guys been up to? What's uh, what's new? Well. Wow. Either of you, really. Let me let me start by saying that someone tweeted at Cape Mon and said it's just because the the Dark Souls cast. Well, that person will be happy this week because no one on this podcast played Dark Souls this week. There you go. Sure. Yeah. So there you go. It's true. Nobody played Dark Souls. We just no, mentioned I thought about it, it this morning played. actually. Did you, did you did you play it at yeah. all? Uh, yeah. A couple hours in. Mm. Yeah. Well, this week. I haven't had the time to put twelve hours a day in like I want. So. I got. I got. Way back into CS:GO, like. Yeah, are you back after that? Well, we played that one stream, and well, then... I played um last night. I played or no Friday night. I played uh, two or three more comp matches, and then I've been just hitting up deathmatch and casual queue or whatever, um, like trying just you know for the hell of it, kind of trying to get skins. Really, is what I'm trying to do. Like I'm totally into that. I'm never gonna buy a case, but. I love to like finish the match and then see if I get something. And then if I do get something I can open, I definitely go buy a key right away. <laughs> I'm like totally all about <laughs> How it. How much are key? I've never even opened one. How much are keys? It depends. Yeah, 250. The sticker capsule keys are like 99 cents, I think. I could be wrong on that though. But um, I'm totally back into that. Um, and DM is really fun, slash and chat. Uh, I like that I can just queue up, even though the Val servers, I think. People were saying the Val servers are 64 tick. Yeah, they're shit. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, but I, I, I love that I can just queue on and get in a game really quickly like that. Um, and casual is not too bad. Um, like, especially when I'm a person who's just trying to get, like, shot and angles down. Because I'm totally... And, and grenade spots and stuff. Like, I'm totally out of the loop on all that yet like when we were playing scott it was like you and sky shark carrying <laughs> the rest of us um yeah but... that was fun I, I i you know what it is i would have to play more i had a, there was brief moments i was having a lot of fun but it's weird like cs for me anymore is i just don't have the fire man i don't have the passion i used to have it's gone i don't know i i feel I, i'm down to stream it more though like next time you're streaming it and you yeah, want to play yeah. competitive hit me up because I, I will play well rumor but, has uh, it we're gonna do competitive queue while Jimmy Wizenhunt tells us. What oh we're yeah, doing if that wrong, ha- I'm so down live. for that. Like, the coaching, <laughs> yeah, that'll be hilarious. Yeah, I'm so. Jimmy down for tweeted that. at me and he was like, he yeah. was like, I'd love to coach you guys. I was like, this is gonna be horrible. Let me just say, Sky Shark <laughs> has an AK shot that if I didn't know him, I would instantly call him an aimbotter. Hundred percent. Sky Shark is good at every game. His his uh, his his one shots with the AK are just mm-hmm. fucking filthy. He he dropped a forty he, bomb our first match. He dropped yeah. a forty bomb on some kids, so. Um, yeah. yeah, he's he's quite. <laughs> I'm only good Asian? at shooting people. Are you Asian, Sky Shark? <laughs> Are you Asian, Sky Shark? Put one in chat if you're Asian. Why does it matter, Scott? <laughs> why does it fucking matter? You know why it matters. It does matter. It's just is very important. It doesn't matter. I don't. Like, I don't see in color. I'm colorblind, actually. Look, it's like I was saying so to Ernest Lee at Brandon's wedding. I was like, er- Ernest was like, "Man, I should play Street Fighter." I'm like, you should. You're already halfway there, dude. Like. You've already got half the the good stuff going for you. You're Asian, and that's half the battle with fighting he's, games. He is not Asian, which is interesting. Yeah, yeah. Ernie, Ernie's really good at um, Ernie's really good at League. He's almost diamond. Fuck that man. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. He's also but, good at everything else too. So he also Arvin, has big muscles. God bless him. He does have huge muscles. Uh, <laughs> Ernie could get it, is what I'm saying. <clears throat> but yeah, so is... I've been playing lots of CS:GO. Um, Seeing yeah. some improvement on like my shot, I still have no idea what the fuck I'm doing. Like, as far as like strategy, but at least yeah. I can I can stay around one to one and like in casual. Which, granted, before people in chat are like, "Well, it's fucking casual, obviously." It's well, yeah, but 
I'm I'm going like 1.5 or two to one KD in casual. You can still get so. the. You can still learn and improve game mecha- or mechanics and yeah. awareness and casual. It's yeah, like totally it's, fine. It's just you can't get like your buys down because if yeah, for people true. who haven't played casual, I guess it's called casual competitive, even though it's not. It's just it's mm. casual. You know, you can play diffuse maps just like regular CS, but it's like 10 v 10 max, I think, and it gives you armor. So everyone gets armor automatically. So you don't have to buy it. So your buys are kind of like knowing when. That was one thing I did completely wrong the whole time we played Scott was like buying when I shouldn't have and stuff without really knowing what to do. Um, yeah. But, so I played a lot of CSGO. I played a lot of Hearthstone this week, like a shitload of Hearthstone. Um, and a lot of Street Fighter. So I've just been playing games that are, you know, competitive in nature. <laughs> like all yeah. week, I haven't touched like Dark Souls. Do you I, play ranked competitive or on Street Fighter, or is there? I do ranked play ranked competitive. Yeah. yeah. Um, the matchmaking on that game is fucky. It's <laughs> mm-hmm. like it's not the if you put um, same region, you usually get a good connection. Like connection is usually okay. Um, like if you play a hundred matches and you're playing, you know, on reasonable because you can see people's bars or whatever. So if you're playing people with yellow or green connection, like yeah. you're usually okay. But beyond yellow, um, like it's a crapshoot. And then even sometimes on yellow, you don't know. So you set your region for matchmaking. You set your skill level, which it does off your points. Um, mm. And uh, but what you really want to do is set same region any skill level for those wanting to do it. There's a good good chunk of players on PC. It's not like I can't get a match. Um, I can get lots of matches, uh, but I <laughs> like I beat a sixteen hundred player point guy today, which is like pretty good. It's not incredible for for comparison. I think PR Balrog, who's the number one Balrog on, I mean he's one of the best players in the world anyway, but he's the number one Balrog on PC, and he has like four or five thousand player points. Uh, okay. So and the, how many do you accrue a match, or does it depend? It depends on who you beat. Mm, um mm-hmm. so like i beat a 1600 okay. player point uh able today and gained like 100 points but you know if i lose to a dude around my skill level it's like a 20 point drop or a 20 point gain but you can't tell because you get player points based on which character you're playing so if you play a character you've never played before mm. <laughs> like you know so if someone could come in with zero player points but really know how to play the game and just shit on you Right. So, I mean, but the matching is so weird in that game. Like, it, it doesn't make any sense. Um, but I still have fun doing it. Although I did rage so hard at it this week, I uninstalled once. <laughs> so there is that. But I also tried a new game out this week, uh, which I'm just, I've am i been doing on the Friday streams here on KV Mod, but I've been trying to do more of um, and want to do more of. Now that we have some better cash flow, we can get some new games and just take chances on them. Uh we played Bound by Flame, which got reviews all over the place. Like, before I even got to play it, the embargo lifted on Thursday. And uh, <clears throat> and then on Friday, we got to play it, but all the reviews came out, like, Thursday afternoon. Polygon gave it a 4 out of 10. I think IGN gave it a 2 <laughs> out of 10. Um, so it's just fluctuating all over the board. Game Game Informer gave it an eight out of ten. PC Gamer hmm. was a five fifty four, basically a five or a six on a ten. That's weird. Scale, That's really is, all over. Which is like oh, an shit. average game. So it was all over the place. And it, the problem with it is, it's a brand new franchise. This is the issue with a game like this. I think you guys will agree. It's forty dollars. So it's brand new game for forty dollars. Hmm. Okay. And it's an RPG, so it could be. You could go into it and it could be absolute garbage. Like <laughs> right. you wouldn't know till you did it. So things we learned Friday. Uh the dialogue is the worst written dialogue maybe <laughs> that I've ever seen in a video game. Like it's so poor. They're talking like it's us talking now. Like, but it's in, you know, medieval it's supposed to, like Game yeah. of Thrones times. Oh, uh, okay, like. interesting. Yeah. <laughs> um <laughs> Like, he's calling people, your character's, like, calling people dickheads and motherfuckers and stuff. <laughs> okay. Like, like it's mm. it's very poorly written and makes no sense. Like, the dialogue is terrible. The lip syncing on the, the voice acting is way off. Um, I guess a small development team made it. I'd never heard of the studio. It was made by Spiders, was the name of the studio. 
So, well, right away, Sark is done with this game. He doesn't even want to see it. It's made by spiders, but... Um, yeah, God. <laughs> but oh. the gameplay is surprisingly fun. Um, and you've got, like, some cool talent trees in it. Um, you get some powers. Uh, the combat took some getting used to, but in the same way that I felt like Dark Souls uh, took getting used to. So... It, I mean, it was a little, it was a little odd. I don't think it's a terrible game. I think it's a really good game when it goes on sale. <laughs> when huh, that thing okay. goes on sale for like fifteen dollars or something, I think you could probably like, if you wanted to go through and beat it, you could probably get your money's worth. For forty dollars, no way, no way in hell. Like, <laughs> whereas like I didn't, I wouldn't hesitate once to tell someone to play like a Dark Souls, you know, or um some other you know triple a priced games but 40 dollars for a brand new it is very witchery it's very much like the witcher if you ever played mm. that combat wise very much like the witcher so but it's pretty well done combat like um but i wouldn't I so wouldn't you can't recommend, recommend it. it well what i I'm can't recommend is it, the, really the can't. crazy variety of opinions yeah from the reviews like it's like. i think it's a great steam sale game <laughs> Let's put it that nice. way. The controller controls are really good. I did think that immediately upon first using a keyboard on it, I was like, this isn't going to work on a keyboard. But Witcher worked on a keyboard for me, though. So Yeah, it was fine. Um, so maybe it would. But, um, yeah, just super competitive stuff. No Dark Souls this week and uh, Bound by Flame. <laughs> no, the Witcher games are way better, Richard McSundy. I'm not even saying they're on the same level, but... The combat is very much in that vein. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. I'm trying to give it a style to compare it to. Because if you watch a trailer of Bound by Flame, it looks a little like Dark Souls, um, combat-wise. But that is not how it plays whatsoever. Um, so, Okay. But that's it. Sweet. What about you, John? Uh, not much this week. Lots of Hearthstone. Uh, a little bit of Wildstar, just getting a little more of a feel for it for launch. I'm like I'm not so much leveling. good shit. I'm just kind of... I'm just playing around with it a little bit, uh, so I know what's going on when it launches. But that's the game. That's the next one. Yeah, this is you know this is interesting to me because I've been seeing on Twitter you going ham about it, and Dan, you know Dan, with all your reservations last time I talked to you, Dan, does this change uh, your I opinion just, at all? This is, trusted sources are telling me good things on Twitter yes, too. Like, that's what I'm saying. And I'm just like, <sighs> Dan, I think Dan, I just you know don't what? I want think to be a part. sub, man. <laughs> <laughs> Dan, I think your old MMO yeah. heart has gotten uh, covered in ice a little bit, and I think I think it's still beating. I think you want to play. You want to the do. sub thing is not a huge issue. I think you just I think you just need to to find a new love, and I think you got to give Wildstar a chance. And you got to but, but love requites love. You know, uh, you know who told me that <laughs> Civic Wayfinder back in the day, and I think that's something that you need to remember. So you have to be open to accept the love that Wildstar could give you. And vice versa. Wild Star is very wowy, so I mean, you would like it. I mean, yeah. it's, Dave, it's Dave wild. Street. It doesn't take itself seriously and has a really yeah. fucking cool art style, like yeah. fucking awesome art style. Dave it reminds, well, like, I mean, that also reminds me of Wow, the art style. It's Wow, it's yeah. space for yeah. me. I mean, God, I just gotta. Can can anyone play open beta? Or you gotta buy it. Yes, you can play. Just All go right. get it. I gotta go get it. Just then. try that shit. I gotta go get it. It's The Incredibles, though, Nick. It's not like WoW. It's The Incredibles. It's like you're playing a picture. Oh, uh, yeah. It, I could see that more. All right. I can see that. A little, I'm, little I'm down more with stylized towards things. that. A little bit of performance issues. I found a couple of tweaks yeah. today that fix it. Um, if you just go to your app data and delete all of the contents in the Wildstar folder, uh, it improves <laughs> things a little bit. It's just trying to load old, old assets because it's a beta and they haven't like actually fixed their code yet. So it's trying to load all of the old in-game assets as well. So you just kind of delete that shit and you're uh, good. <laughs> Grim Angel saying, sounded like Scott was preaching about Jesus to me. Just let, <laughs> let Wildstar just, into your heart. Let yeah, him in. <laughs> totally. Yeah. Well, you know what? My background, you wouldn't joke about that because I used to. That's uh, true. The love of Jesus as well. So I think it's somewhat, yeah, I do think that <laughs> does have an effect on how I talk about things occasionally. Just let it into your heart. <laughs> just you know, let, let him inside. Let Wildstar in there. Never thought it was weird about letting Jesus inside of you. I never thought it was weird before, but now that I'm out of it, it sounds really odd. (laughs) God bless it. All right, Nick, what have you been doing, you fuck boy? Wow, thanks. Uh, (laughs) Other than uh, a little bit of smite, like I played the new game mode. Um, Not really anything other than that. That's basically it. The new game mode is pretty fun. 
you you kill people and stuff, and then you get like siege things, and then you get to the other side or something. I don't know, and you fucking kill dudes. So, <laughs> man, Smite's so lucky to have you as a proponent of their game. That was really riveting yeah. in your description. Yep. You know, God bless. I'm oh. Trying to you know bring my my wise words that, from the community. That represent, makes me. You know? Smite reminds me. I also got into the Heroes of the Storm alpha thing, but I didn't. Game. I didn't touch it yet because I don't like MOBAs generally. So. But yeah, how is say that? Yeah. I think Dan. I don't know. Yeah. Well, you keep saying you don't like. You said you've stuck. You can't. Your guns you need to this. stop going into them by thinking you're not going to like them. That's your problem. I played a good double how... digit hours of Smite. That's not enough. <laughs> I want you to no 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 play a real MOBA. No, 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 no. Wow. <laughs> I've played double digit hours of installing the League of Legends client. And mm. then. <laughs> Dan, we're going to play some League. You know what we're going to do? I played the CS on your ship. We're gonna, you're going to play some C- You're going to play some League Shut with me on my stream. Shut the fuck up. That's what we're going to do. <laughs> no. God. Yeah, it's going to happen. Anyway. Um, <laughs> all right. Well, that's it for him. Uh, I've been play- I played CSGO on Dan's stream, so that was the first time in a long while. I Actually, before I played it, I optimized it via that PC Gamer, gamer article you sent me. Which did it help you? Did, uh, yeah, it did. I mean, it felt, it felt a lot smoother. Because um, I'm at 300 FPS all the time. Yeah, much, same. So. Yeah, since doing that, I am too. Um, and also visually, it just gets rid of a lot of the clutter, I feel like. Um, just kind of cleans things up a little bit. Uh, what else? Uh, League of Legends, as always. And I'm trying to think if there's... Is there anything else? Probably, probably not. So. Did you finish Beyond Two Souls? Oh yeah, uh, no. So yeah, I was. We were playing that. I got to. We got to like, I think like fifteen to thirty minutes before the end, but we had to cut it off because we had to, we had to switch to a different stream. But uh, so we're gonna finish that tomorrow. And then uh, what's happening is Mark, which I don't know if this has been announced yet, but All Sham No Wow will be joining me on that show from now on. And we're gonna start playing. Uh, we're gonna be playing Heavy Rain on Tuesday. Oh God, so Mark, Mark playing another studio. David Cage game. Yeah, it's so he's ready to shit all over it. So it should be fun. <laughs> Uh, so we're doing that on Tuesday, but yeah, I mean, I, I still. Well, Mark's even... getting a gig too because he's the best dude ever. Yeah, he's Mark's really dude. cool. Uh, he's a, he's a good he's a good guy. I I feel like um, with the whole Beyond Two Souls thing, like people keep saying like, ah, it's a bad game. Like, uh, I don't know. I can't. I don't know if you can call it once again. It's the same thing. I don't know if we can call it a game. It's definitely a, you know, it's an it's experience. A, it's an experience. It's you know, choose your own adventure light. Yeah. Uh, but I, I think technically it's still impressive just what they visually and I don't know the story is definitely kind of all over the place and crazy but mm-hmm. I don't know I, I didn't hate it I mean I, I think at the end we'll have to, I'll have to see what the what the ending is I don't know I'm sure there's multiple endings I don't know which one we'll get I think there are you I'm get not the Ellen Page sour, shower scene ending I did actually you know what I <laughs> fucked it up there is the shower scene in the apartment but I fucked up apparently you can sleep with Ryan uh, in the game, and I didn't. Uh, somehow, I did something wrong, and when I tried to sleep with him, she started sobbing on the side of the bed, and he did whatever he had to do. He sa- he sat up and goes, "Okay, well, I think I'm gonna go now." And then he just leaves, and she's sobbing. I mean, to be fair, that would be really awkward, and yeah, I totally get where he's coming from, but I really wanted to bone Ryan, so it didn't happen. Wow. But Someone maybe my next playthrough. Yeah, yeah, next playthrough we'll we'll All go right. through. Well, that's but, what we uh, that's playing what slash talking. sobbing about at the side of the bed. Um, yeah. <laughs> we're going to take a quick 60-second commercial break. Then we'll be back with what was a busy week in news, actually, this week. Some big things happening. Uh, if you're new to the stream, give us a follow. And if you don't want to see commercials here anymore, consider subscribing. We'll be right back. BRB. BRB. <laughs> sobbing. Is your- even the quests in Wildstar are like decent. They're not bad. Yeah, the grind to like uh, what, the what level do we get up to? screen is hysterical. Yeah, like that. we got. I got to fourteen or fifteen, and even we were just questing, and it was like I was enjoying myself. It's pretty God. fun. I haven't bought Warlords yet, so maybe my I bought Warlords for my ninety boost. But I mean, I deactivated my account because it, it'll uh, it'll uh, my WoW account will expire the day Wildstar launches. So, That's pretty advantageous. Yeah, I'll play Wildstar <laughs> for a while, and if I like it a lot, I won't play Warlords. But for not like for now, I don't see myself having any interest in Warlords. Yeah. Fucking Jesus, oh, divine Candle. Jesus, who has said, "Ask and you shall receive; seek and you shall find." <laughs> Hammond and it shall be opened Jesus. unto you. <laughs> Behold me kneeling at your feet, God and you damn. I find consolation when afflicted, protection when. 
persecuted, uh, strength when overwhelmed with trials. This is happening. Enlightened doubt and darkness. You um to will it in my prayer is granted. What are you are you reading a prayer from the internet? That doesn't count. It's on the back of the candle. Oh, okay. I was gonna say. <laughs> like I know any prayers. <laughs> God damn it. Alright, we are back. We are back, and it's time for the news, and one of the biggest stories in gaming, at least for me, in a while. Uh, the new Unreal Tournament has been announced officially. Uh, development started Thursday <laughs> on this thing. Um, if you haven't heard about it, the big details are uh, it is going it's to be free, as free fuck. not free to play, Yes. straight up free. So basically, it's going to be like Dota. It's, the model is seriously Dota 2, TF2, CSGO. Although CSGO is not it's, free to play. It, I yet. mean, that, that model works for Valve, at least. Yeah, it's the same exact model. So the dudes at Epic are building currently in Unreal 4 a deathmatch prototype. That's what they're doing right now at Epic. You can go sign up on the Unreal page. I don't actually have an exact link to where the sign up is, but. I'll get one for the audio Fuck. post. Yeah. Um, you can actually, if you have an Unreal 4 license, you can join Epic in helping to develop uh, this game. Like, for real. Um, it's They are 100% putting it in the hands of the community. It's going to be, you know, obviously moddable. That's what made the old Unreals amazing. And many other that games that we talk about. <laughs> weird from a development standpoint. It does. When you have all ra these random people putting their hands in, yeah, I mean, you know, like, making like, making a game should it should just like there needs to be like a, a cohesive. Well, I think like, Epic's going to have the what core you want to make. Epic's going to yeah, have the okay. core game, and then you know, you know what I, it people like. people who they you know like not even people who they like is like a terrible that's a dumb phrase. People with interesting feedback and and probably good code and good ideas on their forums, you'll be able to talk with them on their forums. They'll be actively monitoring all the time. Um, they're going to be building. From from the ground up, like I said, Epic is going to, uh, <clears throat> is is going to develop the core game, and then the community will be adding everything to it. So this is from day one, though. Playable alpha, they said, is probably like a year away, <laughs> um, but they said maybe they'll get it out by the end of this year. But I would doubt that. You know what? This um, approach of everyone pitching in and doing their part reminds me a lot of uh, a little sickle and hammer, a little, a little <laughs> communism. Anyone? No? I'm surprised there's no articles about that. I mean, I'm totally into it. I think communism can work in game development. Yeah. Uh, I don't think it's great for uh, for countries to uh, to try to enforce. But so, uh, no, I think everyone pitching in and doing their part, and I think it's going to be kind of cool. <laughs> Who knows? Like like yeah, you said, as long as it's not a, like Unreal Tournament three, I don't care. Like that yeah. game was terrible, Basically, but every other Unreal Tournament's been great. It's going to be an Unreal Tournament game. In, in the UE4 engine, with its competitive roots, that's what they said. They want to stick to where Unreal came from, fast-paced, Twitch, you know, high Game skill I'm cap. going to be good at. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Um, the way they're going to make money off this is basically what we just said. So the TF2, the T, I, I think TF2 is probably your closest model to this, although you can't get stuff that will affect the gameplay. So like guns and things that you can get in uh, TF2 that work differently, that won't be in there. But it's all people selling skins, people selling gun skins, models, um, and Epic will take a cut of that on that marketplace. Um, but then the modders will get the rest, kind of like um, Valve and TF2 uh, modders and creators. So, I mean, we have zero to go off as far as the game yeah you know yeah. will actually be but um otherwise i'm pretty pumped <laughs> to see what they put out yeah um, for sure i mean it's fucking free at the, i mean at the end of the day even if the whole thing fails and for some reason it's really bad it's yeah. free still yeah. <laughs> i didn't pay 29.99 for it like i did with the last on earth ornament game so yeah. <laughs> i don't think it will be bad i'm sure it'll be i don't yeah I a think cool it's... experiment I think the first thing you'll see is fucking facing worlds and deck 16 in the map. Like, that will be the yep. first things you get. But they realize what has made... I mean, more developers are not doing what Valve does. I mean, League League does, but with skins only? Or am I... There's Are there other yeah, stuff leagues, you can buy? Yeah, League's only skins. You can buy, like, RP and IP boosts and things yeah. like that. But 
and so, like rune pages or whatever. Right, but you can't. You won't be able to buy like XP boosts or anything like that for this. It's a hundred percent free for the core game. Everything else, skins and stuff, you can get on a marketplace. But all that will be made by the community. Um, I doubt Epic will actually put out very much of that. So, uh, very, very excited for that. I mean, we'll see what it takes. And it actually says on this wiki page, alpha expected in a few months. Um, so you'll be able to grab the alpha. There's not going to be any closed. Nothing about this is closed, which is, I think, one of the coolest things. Um, it's a very large company essentially putting out an open source game. So pretty cool. They're going to put up every code they make. Um, for those of you who are programmers or game creators in the audience, every bit of code Epic does they're going to put up on a GitHub that you can just go download <laughs> as they progress. So Isn't he, Anion learning uh, how to program? Well, maybe he could get his really worthless input on this uh, whole <laughs> process. That'd be cool. <laughs> yes. Just throwing it out there, Anion. Maybe be a contributing member of society. Try to work on something uh, substantial. That'd be cool. <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. Not be Canadian. So, <laughs> well, of course. New Unreal Tournament. Um, very excited. We thought, we thought, like, it was about time. And I know that uh, Cliffy B had said uh, when on his closing speech when leaving epic he begged them basically to make another unreal because <laughs> he was he was leaving so he basically it was like his last order he said before he left um and so we have it so we'll see, have there it to is. see in a few months um yeah. so john added this to the document john added some news in here i did not know about this but now i'm more excited for blizzcon than it was um apparently blizzard may be unveiling uh, what was Project Titan and then was redone completely, uh, their new uh, MMO. So uh, at BlizzCon, they may be uh, <clears throat> they may be releasing you know some details on that at BlizzCon. It would be the that would be where they would do it. Blizzard doesn't do E3. They don't do uh, any of that stuff. So um, if they were going to announce it. That's what makes Valve even more frustrating in a lot of ways. Valve has no conference. Valve has... <laughs> they're just like... There's no place where you're like, ah, they would unveil Half-Life 3 here. Nothing. So, at least we have BlizzCon to look forward to each year for Blizzard news if they're going to announce something big. But... So, yeah. Warlords of Draenor will be out in December, I believe. But they'll be... Uh, I would expect a couple more expansions for WoW, even if they do announce this new one. WoW is not... It's losing steam in the grand scheme, but really it's still massive. Still making well over a billion dollars a year. Yeah, so... And the movie's coming out. Ha <laughs> ha! So, uh, Blizzard's... The rumored title is unlikely to be subscription-based, so... We'll see. We'll see what it actually is. I doubt it's going to be free-to-play, though. I just doubt that completely. So we have that to look forward to. When is BlizzCon? November, I believe. Am I crazy? I don't remember, but it's I'm going. This article, oh. yeah, I know you're going. Wow, this article does. <laughs> they announced the dates. We had it on the podcast, but this article doesn't even have them. Um, we also got a first look at uh, Killing Floor Two this week, which I know all of us have played, and were. Oh so man, far. yeah, this is this is really. This is what I'm most excited about. People are so hype, man. I fucking like, love Killing Floor. People were tweeting huh? at me, like, so hype about this. Like, more than anything else this year, people were like, Killing Floor 2? Holy shit. I hope I would hope uh, Mark's excited, because Mark played a lot of Killing he Floor. Says the, he you know. said this is something I will actually get overly hyped for, and Mark doesn't get hyped for anything. Yeah. Yes, okay, good. <laughs> so, yeah. um, I wanted to make sure. So, we don't have a release date, but it is going to be coming to Early Access. Um... Tripwire, of course, a company with a history of modding, so they're going to let everyone in on it early. Uh, the screenshots and shit look great. It's still on Unreal 3. Um, uh, there's a lot of, you know, cool details in here. It's going to be, they're going to be releasing an SDK on release. So, I mean, it was already pretty moddable. There were a good chunk of mods, as Killing 4 was a mod anyway. Um, but it's going to be on early access for Windows and Steam OS. Uh, I would think in the fall, although they're not saying a date. Um, and I would assume it'll be around 20 bucks again, just like Killing Floor was. Uh, 
apparently the gore in it is just insane. Like, compared... they, yeah, what they say it was, it was like uh, the blood would stay on the walls forever. Yeah, so each wave, all the blood and guts from the previous wave stayed <laughs> in the in the spots where you left it. So, <laughs> like, it's they can render textures in real time. Persistent I guess. gore, they called it. Yeah. Also, they're animating at super high frame rates, so that like yeah. the slow mo will look incredible. It's yeah. like like somebody threw out a statistic where it's like every bullet gets like twenty frames. Yep. Something and like that. They made a new yeah. system. Uh, they have a gore system they've built just for Killing Floor 2 called Meat. <laughs> Massive Evisceration and Trauma. <laughs> uh, it's supposed to be... It's not as... They said it's pretty disturbing, but not as disturbing because nothing in the game looks human. Um, I guess Soldier of Fortune, they're saying, had a similar system. Um, the uh, Flesh Pounds are more deadly this time around too um, God, which is just horrible to hear yeah uh, it's real bad nothing was more horrifying even more than the patriarch um <laughs> like yeah. flash pounds were like if that thing gets in here we are fucked <laughs> one of us at least is dead this time um but it's pretty cool they've added uh separate they, they've had the money this time to mocap uh, actual actors instead of um, instead of just animating models, which is all they had the money for for Killing Four One since it was a mod. Um, so it looks a lot better. Again, still Unreal Three. I was hoping it was Unreal Four. Um, and yeah, there we go, Nick. What happens if we animate our weapon shooting at ridiculously high frame rates? We animated it yep, 242 just... FPS. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Which gives us 22 yeah, I think frames it's like, per shell that ejects out of the weapon. <laughs> yeah, they did a test with, like, the bullpup. And yeah, it's, like, apparently you can just see, like, every time your gun kicks back. Yeah. Because it's, like, animated so well. Yep. And, uh, basically, otherwise it's gonna be, you know, it's fucking killing floor. You know, it is what it is. The level cap is now 25. I'm not sure what it was in the old game because it was so hard to get to. Um, <laughs> you had to yeah, play a fuckload damn. of killing floor. Together. That game was just fucking brutal, man. I, I've missed. You know, we should play. I don't. God, we, we used to stream that a, uh, somewhat often. That yeah, we should play that again. Yeah, I have a game. I haven't that played much of it. I joined a few nights, but yeah, you got obsessed like, with it, and I had no idea why. But it was fun. It's fun. Yeah, I like horde really mode. Fun. Like I don't play games that don't come out in the year that it is. So sorry, guys. <laughs> God, we'll see you guys on Advanced Warfare. It sounds like a. Uh... Most of the zombies are the same. They've added one new type and a few new abilities to each zombie. So, um, but yeah, the the fact that the the best part is the the SDK that will come out, and there will be mods on mods for this game. So, and building it from the ground yeah, up cool. should make it a better game overall because it was just a mod before it was not a fully developed game. So, which is hard to believe because they sold three million copies. So, um. They were like, yeah, we were able to hire people, like 60 people. To put that in perspective, Zombie has about 60 people. So Tripwire was not even as big as Zombie until, um, people-wise, until now. So, but that should be hype. I will get it on Early Access the second it's available, because Killing Floor. Um, but we also put out our build guides for this month. Um, things Brandon and I learned this month... Uh, mainly are that Ram is a fuckboy, and uh, we hate him. Uh, Ram sucks, mm -hmm. guys. Ram is horrible right now. It fucked up pretty much all the builds until the over $1,000 stuff. Um, so the 800 and 500 got a little knocked down simply due to just being able to put Ram in them. Um, so the build guides are out for May. We know we waited two months, but they are here. Uh, we had to downgrade the video card in the 500 to a 260x from a 270x or a 265. I forget what we had in there, but we had to put. This is how bad it was. We had to put one stick of eight gigabytes in that build, so you don't even get dual channel RAM in that thing now. What is what is going on? He's manipulating the market right now. There was a what, big what's fire. Happening? There was a large fire mm. at a RAM factory where they make a lot of okay. chips. Also, production Sucks. is somewhat switching over to DDR4 now because it's going to be coming out at some point although it will be ludicrously expensive uh when it comes out so it was 60 bucks for one stick of eight gigs um, jesus i got 
16 gigs of Sniper for like 80, <laughs> just like a year and a half ago. So, yeah. Um, so we had to knock that down. The $800 build stayed roughly <clears throat> the same, uh, except again, we were constrained by RAM a little bit. Um, the enthusiast, what we did discover too is that if you have around, and we don't like to, you know, say PC gaming is so expensive, but. If you have around twelve hundred or thirteen hundred bucks to spend on a PC, you can get seriously the top of the line. Like you can get pretty much the best thing you can build. Um, that's reasonable. Not for John, of course, but for <laughs> everyone else, you can get yeah. for thirteen hundred bucks. You can put a seven for an upgrade soon. You can put a seven eighty Ti for under thirteen hundred bucks if you don't want the i seven processor. Like it's kind of kind of awesome what you can get there. Um, and we changed up our professional build, so it's got a 780 Ti in it. It's a monster EVGA super clocked ACX card, um, and we put an H100i in that build. Um, now that Brandon and I own one, we much recommend the H100i. It's fantastic. But uh, so our build guys are. You can go check them out on CaveMod.com, of course. And now for the last piece, which is either good or bad news, depending on how you want to look at it, but. Another game has been yanked completely off Steam from early access. Um, this one is called Earth Year 2066. Uh, it was $20 on early access. Um, it launched April 16th, and uh, now there is no website currently for the studio that put it on there. Um, and no one can get any <coughs> contact there, and apparently... Uh, yeah, it seems like a real big scam, doesn't yep, it? Yep, it seems that basically like a scam. Um, this is why there need to be less early access games on yes, Steam, at least. Or just in general. Agree. Can we just be in general less early access? That would be awesome. Yeah. So, I mean, it's, it's good news in the in that Steam is yanking it and refunding everyone, which it's actually... It's bad past. that they even let that on there. Right. It's do bad they have that anyone that quality far. controls at Valve? Like, do they I have one it. person whose job... Like, because that, that, that would really stop. I, I mean, I know it's subjective, but, like, if they had one person sitting down and being like... Like, it, pretty quickly, you could be like, this is clearly a money grab. I don't think that's really how Valve works, well, though. So no, me, I know. I know it's not. But Let me read this quote from the Polygon article. Uh, Killing Day Studios has been accused of lifting artwork from elsewhere on the web and using it without permission, deleting negative feedback from the game's Steam page, and using sock puppet accounts to talk it up. Killing Day Studios appears to have no website or regular web presence. The game's description and its updates on the Steam Greenlight page are written in broken English. Efforts to contact yeah. Killing Day Studios have been unsuccessful. The game was built as a first-person post-apocalyptic open-world survivor game. Hmm. What are we capitalizing on here? <laughs> and uh, basically then they make reference to Big Rigs Over the Road Racing and, of course, the War Z right. incident, which is still now on Steam somehow. Again, that should never have been allowed to fucking happen. Like, for yeah, that game, crazy. that game should not have been allowed to happen. Um, but you have until May 19th if one of you, you don't even want to admit it in chat, but if one of you bought this thing, you have until Don't worry, May if you admit it, you only you be banned from chat. better fucking admit it. And, uh, admit it now before it. God, otherwise you'll burn forever. <laughs> so, and by in front of God, I mean in Twitch chat. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, it's good that they did police this, but on the other hand, how did it get this far? Like, really should not have been able to. I was actually wondering about this about a legit game. Uh, called Snow that we've played uh, before on this. It's a skiing game in the Crisis Engine. Um, it's actually pretty cool, but they didn't update it for like six months. And I was like, all right. And uh, almost a year gone, there's still no real sound in it. <laughs> um, so, but, I mean, so I'm starting to think that maybe they didn't do anything beyond the initial thing. But, um, So... Valve is getting rid of Greenlight, though. We know that. So that's going away. Thank God. Yeah, that's going so away. So much shit. Because they just realized that people will just abuse it, essentially. Yeah, I wish there was a policing system. I know Valve wants to hand the power to the user, partially yeah. because Valve also wants <laughs> to say so small. Don't fucking no. do that in every case. No. You can't. They're not uh, capable. Can't. The public is not capable of that. Yeah. Like, it, it's the this is a great police. example, this game. Um this is like, you know, why can't people just love each other? And sh It's because shit like this happens. Shit. Because <laughs> yeah. as soon as something good in the world tries to come out, you get a bunch of greedy fucking assholes with no morals and uh, totally unscrupulous, and then they do this shit. Yep. So, 
That's why. That's why. Whenever you meet someone, your first thought should be, "How are they going to fuck me over?" That should be your <laughs> wow. first thought. This is when you Scott size jaded. them up, and after you're done judging everything about them, your first thought should be, "How is this person going to be fisting me in the next fifteen minutes?" Wow. Not, not literally. Holy but just, shit! But just, I mean, sometimes, you know. sometimes it could be literally. It could be, but I'm saying just in general about how they can fuck you. So it's just to make to make yourself. That's you what I thought when I consumer. when I met Brandon. And that and my thought came true. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Wow. Oh, here's it some here's some new news that we didn't bring up really that is very interesting. EA will be shutting down Battlefield 1942, Battlefield oh. Vietnam, Battlefield 2, Battlefield 2 Modern Combat, Battlefield 2142 on June 30th. Wow. A couple of Doesn't those games are pretty still quite popular. 1942 yeah, and 2142 have heard people yeah, still they... play. They gave 1942 out for free, like on Origin. Like people just have that game, and now it's just useless. When did 2142 so come out? I know it wasn't super popular. Uh, uh 2000. Oh, really? That long? Let's ago? say oh, man. one. That seems like God. I felt like it was. And then you know, I think two came out in 2005. Those are related to GameSpy shutting down, but they're not picking them back up. That's the difference. Um. A few things got picked up, but not those. People were talking about it. came out 2006, it. actually. Holy shit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, if you, like old ba- <laughs> if you like old Battlefield games, too bad. Dippy dippy. Um, God, that game spot shut down. A lot of people are picking up their games from that, but apparently this. Wow, BF 1942, Battlefield 2, and 2142 are gone on Origin, according to chat here. So. Does that mean like they're gone from people's libraries, can't, or you can't No, get you can't them. buy them. You can't buy them anymore. It's like fucking Prey. You can't get Prey anywhere. anywhere. I always wanted to play that game because I heard interesting things about it. Yeah. Not that it was like super good, but that it was like kind of cool. Well, I was at QuakeCon. The first year I went to QuakeCon, they deb- debuted Prey 2 there, and it looked really oh awesome. Oh, my and God. Rip. It. Rip. Yep. So, it's whatever. in legal hell now. I just want to be an alien bounty hunter, please. I just want to play Prey 1. I looked it up on Amazon the other day. Fucking PC copy is $90. I was like, go fuck yourself. Or or like an CD Xbox wrong. copy. Because Steam, the, so for those that don't know how this works, Steam gets codes from a dev, and they get a certain amount of codes. Normally, this amount of codes never runs out because the dev wants to keep selling the game. Prey, mm. they just wouldn't give them any more. <laughs> huh. They ran Good. out of Prey codes like what many What is money? Years ago. Why do you want it? Yeah. So you can't get Prey on Steam. You can get it on Amazon. You can Use find it. console. And... Generate codes. Free money. It's not a whole lot of effort, but no. Prey 2 is that. in development slash hold slash legal hell. That's where it is. It's in <laughs> game limbo. Yep. It may never come out. In fact, I would put my money on Prey 2. It's, it's a festering fucking cyst inside of Pierre Molyneux's asshole. Whoa, dude. <laughs> nice. Nice. You know what? I'm actually a huge Gotis player, so... <laughs> Talk about people wanting their money back. Um, Where's Peter? Man, I need Peter with the, to hit us with a news story. I haven't heard from that boy in a long time. Yeah, dude, I love we were Peter. Big on I Mullen love New. Peter. We were big on Mullen news stories for a little bit. I love Mullen news. When the fucking yeah. cube was him, going man. hard. Oh I just want to. I want to play more Mullen new games, but they only come out like once a century. <laughs> it's true. We are only worthy of a game once a century, and also. I just like he's very he's very infectious. If you ever watch him, he's very passionate. It is because it's like you know he's like basically sniffing his own farts, but like <laughs> I you're know, also but like, I damn like Peter, it. tell me more. I just <laughs> want to like... fall into your arms and you're gonna whisper <laughs> sweet nothings to me, and they're not gonna come true at the final in the final game. And I just love you so much. Right. Please penetrate me, on, and I will be unwell. Well, okay. I mean, I'm okay with everything Nick just said. To be honest, that know. is my relationship <laughs> with Peter Muller. <laughs> Jeez, damn it. Love him. Um, new releases this week. Uh, what is the 12th? Tomorrow. Tomorrow, the 12th. The Last Tinker, City of Colors, which we may take a look at this week. Uh, it's like a Psychonauts slash, I guess, like a 3D platformer. Um, but Psychonauts is what came to mind when I watched the trailer of it. Uh, it actually looks pretty cool um, if you're into those type of games. We are probably going to be able to get a code for it. So we'll take a look at it Friday, if nothing else. Uh, it's 20 bucks. It appears yes yep 21.99 full price um you can get it for 19 dollars right now so it looks pretty good actually um like i said if you're into that now this actually got me somewhat excited except for that it's 60 fucking dollars on tuesday dynasty warriors 8 extreme legends complete edition yes that's extreme with an x 
comes out on Steam. If you've never played a Dynasty Warriors game, I'm they're pretty I'm trying to think fun. of what the last Dynasty Warriors game I played PS2, was. PS2, a PS2 game. This is the, this I, I want to say it was 3. Yeah, Dynasty Warriors is pretty sweet, actually. Um, the $60 price tag is really making me not... Or $50. I wonder but, if it, I, it has it changed because <laughs> I feel like that's a series that doesn't change. No, it's still Dynasty Wars. I think there's even more shit on the screen. Like with <laughs> yeah. the more okay, yeah, that's, can the, do. that's the only direction you could take that game in. It's like yeah. you just hit people and you just hit like you smash your controller and like just kill like a thousand dudes. It's getting it. really good reviews. Um, the Escapist, which is a trustworthy source, 80 out of 100. So, I mean, it's pretty good. If you're into Dynasty Warriors, I mean, You'll probably like that was it. literally actually there for eight. That was the last ad campaign. Even more shit happening on screen. That's what it would be, though. I mean, have you played it, Sky? Have you ever played no, Dynasty Warriors? I've, no, I've only seen videos so of it. I've never you played. play as like a commander of an army. Yeah. And then, uh, but you're like a badass. So you there's several different ones you can play as. You play through campaigns. Yeah, you, you like pick a character, and they they're like every sort attack, of different. <laughs> every attack is AOE. So like yeah. you've got a big halberd or whatever, you can swing it and hit like so a bajillion dudes at once. Yeah, you like, just like jump into a crowd of dudes and then just kill them all. It's like that's, Devil that's May nice. Cry or a game like that, but with eight thousand enemies instead of like two. <laughs> like they're making yeah. a the Legend of Zelda one. Yep, they are making yep, a Legend of Zelda. That's coming out. One. It's it's just Dynasty Warriors uh, Zelda themed. I just punched my cat in the face on, on accident. But I, I I actually really found these games to be fun. They're also extremely hard once you get, get into them. But you, it's like a combo system and special moves, and then you fight. There a boss. is a level of finesse required yes. for Dynasty Wars. Even They're though, fun. like when you look at it, it's just like, okay, you just <laughs> yeah kill kill That's, everything you just on the smash. screen. But yeah, so it's uh, I think it's also out for PS4 and Xbox One, but I could be completely wrong. Um, but there was so much shit on the screen on the PS2 version. Now I'm on a fucking PC in 2014. I, can't, I don't even want to know how many enemies are going to be on the screen in this one. Um, it also always looks good. Dynasty Warriors. So uh, check that out. Fifty dollars. I'm gonna buy that. <laughs> I might. I might. Now yeah, I'm, I'm like, kind of hype on this like, now. Uh, I got. I kind of have to like pay my dues on Dynasty Wars. It's yeah. been a while. Yeah, it's it's a fucking good series. Uh, the fact that they're still making them after eight, like yeah. Japan doesn't yeah. give a fuck. Dude. Gotta respect that, you know. <laughs> so, uh, and never then, change Japan. Never change. Uh, May fifteenth, a game that's been at every PAX that I've ever been to, so three years worth of <laughs> two conferences a year. Battle Block Theater is coming to PC on Thursday. Um, it's a platformer. Uh, you can co-op in it, so it looks pretty fun. I believe it's made by Behemoth. Behemoth, yes. I'm hoping you're gonna say Firefall, <laughs> but secretly I was hoping you weren't gonna say Firefall. What? What? Are, does anyone even remember Firefall? I don't know what that um, game is. Nobody does at this point. I I ve I very much recall playing through it and uh, just thinking, God bless. Why? Why? Yes. God bless and why. Like so much work being put into this, and as I was being toured through the game by a very nice gentleman, <laughs> uh, I didn't have the, the yeah. I was the question in my mind was like why? Like there's just no. I just don't see a point. Like why would? Well, I know Flanlord played a good amount of Firefall. They tried. They tried. And uh, he was like, yeah, I mean it's a pretty good game up until there's absolutely nothing to do, which is like pretty quickly. <laughs> He's like, it's like an MMO that just ends after five levels. Exactly. Like, yeah. It was just like there's. It was. You know, like, yeah, but like, you can shoot things. But even the reason for doing any, they just didn't have like. Yeah, I don't know. It just wasn't uh, interesting enough to, want make you even want to do any of the stuff. Like go and see what this like. Right. To get into the battles and stuff like that out in the out in the open world. After like a few, after like forty five minutes, you almost felt like you had seen everything, yeah. that you could kind of see. And I was kind of disappointed. This is a good evidence for Fireball. Uh, Le Chevalier in the chat. I want a Firefall Founders Pack from Destructoid. Never logged in. So he got like all the extra shit and never logged <laughs> in. <laughs> it's just like, uh. Yeah. That game, man. And what's his face? Mark Kern, the guy who fucking helped found that studio, has left, has since left. So. I think he was Surprise. removed. <laughs> um, he's one of the original WoW guys, so it's not like he doesn't have any money. Um, but, yeah. We'll see if that game ever comes out. But yes, Dynasty Warriors hype. 
Battle Block Theater coming out this week. So, all right, we're going to take a quick two minute commercial break, guys, and then we'll be back with viewer questions. Go see if there's any more worthy ones in here. You had one that you shied away from, Dan, that I really wanted you to do, but you just won't do it. Get it, wait. No. Oh, no, we're not Come fucking doing that. God. Come on, Dan. I ain't just... dramas. Dan, it's not going to be drama. I just want to, I want people's honest opinion. I man. want some real drama. I just, I'm one, I'm just going to submit from an anonymous account. Just be like, are you pro choice or pro life? Just All right, real... fine, Scott. I'll just throw it, it in. I'm just throw it in. in you don't have to. If you don't want to, if you don't want to partake, you totally don't have to partake. I, well, I, mean, I, I, but I think this is a clothes. really good. We. This is a really good. I, I mean, I don't. I just think it's a very. It's a topic that everyone talks about. I, I already forgot what that question was. So. I put it on. It's on the second page. <laughs> it's on the second page. <laughs> we'll end with that question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's a good one. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. By the way, I can't hear you guys on each other's mics, so that's good. That's good. Not that I there expected a, to, really. There but. is a wall separating us, but, you know. You never know. That yeah. wasn't guaranteed. Yeah, that's true. My floors are thin as fuck. Like, you can hear me upstairs <laughs> like when I do this. <clears throat> I love that gaming talk shows is a thing now. I'm very happy about that. Yeah, that is good. I'm quite happy about it. Now people can't come in here and like, you're not playing <laughs> Modern Warfare 2. The best was CSGO, because people yeah. are super hardcore about that game, so they were like, what the fuck? <laughs> How fucking dare you. <laughs> what is the best adult movie title you've heard slash starred in? <laughs> If you had to change, well, that's kind of, uh, that'd be horrible, but I'm actually going to put this one on here. Also, this guy's Twitter name is just epic in a bad way. <laughs> it's just, all right, okay, I think we're back. Yes, we're back. We are big. We are big with both kids. Hello. Kissed. All right. Let me time stamp it. We're back with the viewer questions. John is always Antonio Banderas. That's the answer. Um, Nine Inch Males is one of the best porno names I've ever heard. <laughs> Jesus. Um, there's also, this isn't even a porno, but it's one of those flicks that's like might as well be. Have you guys seen? It's on Netflix. It's called Nude Nuns with Big Guns. This is a real thing that is on Netflix. So it's obviously really? not porn because it's, I mean. Well, it's probably softcore. Yeah, it's basically softcore. But yes, nude nuns with big guns. It's Hell horrible. Yeah. <laughs> Are they actually nude in the in the? I film? mean, partially? Not, not that I'm going to watch it, but I'm just. Partially, like, no. You, okay, don't label it as nude when it's just partial. Yeah, that Fuck doesn't. They're top most full of the frontal. movie. They're well, topless. Full, okay. Movie, All right. So. No, okay. don't settle, Scott. Do not settle. <laughs> All right, fine. Settle. I won't watch it. I won't watch it. Uh, All right. This first question is from Dildo DeFaggins, one of the most offensive Twitter names wow, good Lord. I've ever seen. Bless um, If you had to change the podcast to talk about one game only, what game would it be? That would be horrible. <laughs> there we go. Call of Duty <laughs> Modern Warfare 2. Specifically, <laughs> if you wanted to narrow it down to an individual game type and gun and perk, it would be, <laughs> um, it would be the intervention search and destroy on the favela yeah. with Slate of Hand Pro. Hell yeah! Yes. Do you have FMJ on that or extended mag? Uh, FMJ usually. Okay. Hell yeah, that bullet. Pen. Obvious fall camo, you know. No, um, oh, definitely fall. I. Yeah, but it would have to be quick scoping on favela. I feel so sad that I missed Modern Warfare. Favela. Tuesday. Man, Best search and destroy map, then a top notch. I'm to think of what my favorite Modern Warfare 2 one was. I really liked Terminal. Terminal was fun. 
I missed. Yeah, all you that loved room. getting nukes on terminal with Shaggy. Didn't yeah, you? on that red roof, you know, you know, you got you throw Semtex on on C bomb when there's six dudes conveniently there a minute into the game. You know, and uh, you get an eight one Semtex. <laughs> eight one Semtex. What's going on, guys? Shaggy here. Okay, eight one Semtex. You know, we're gonna load out with our uh, uh, slide out hand pro. We got uh, the Predator missile. How yeah, shuffle gunner pro. You know. God, man, those were the days, man. Drama every day. I remember when that news <sighs> broke that that was a fake. Vi I mean, it was a fake video. That was the internet blew up. God, man, I really don't miss those days at all. Actually, I'm not kidding. but it was <laughs> fun. It? To uh, I kind of do. A you know, it was bit. fun to be in it. It was fun to there, be in. Th that's when like sure. YouTube drama was really good, though. Yeah, it was. True. It was juicy. It was Alex, Alex, and the. He graduated. When's he coming back? Yeah, I know. That's what I told him. I said, "Welcome back to the Cave Mod Podcast." <laughs> <laughs> Well, yeah, congratulations. Shout outs to Alex, who doesn't yes. listen to this, but shout outs to Alex anyway. Uh, former KB Mod member, most beloved KB Mod member. Um, he did graduate from school, finally. Speaking Still, of a YouTube drama, the king right there, Private Joker. He was the king. Back, back in the day. Calling out everybody. Till we the, uh, rehabilitated the him. Greed the, greed, the greed video. The greed video. We rehabilitated him into not giving a shit. <laughs> yeah, and that, yeah, exactly. All we were like, Alex is like, it just doesn't fucking matter. Who cares? And he's like, yeah, you know, it's kind of true. I love Alex, man. I miss him. He's coming to LA soon, so I don't he know is. how soon. But he's going to he stay is. with me in my bed. <clears throat> <laughs> but yeah. Nice. Um, Maybe you should run that by your roommate. Thank you. God, this. <laughs> it's fucking literally been like a day. Me. Fucking kill me, please. <laughs> My answer is um, humorous answer Pokemon Snap. Actual answer Halo Three. God, I mean, I guess World of Warcraft. On Halo is my, Five, my uh, real answer. I want Halo Five to be good. Mm-hmm. Hopefully, they've learned from their mistakes. So I can pick up another set of control freaks. I don't know where mine are. From I don't I just, know if they fit on the Xbox One or not. I just you got some optic scuffs. I'd have to be back in a game, a single game community, as much as I was into World of Warcraft to do that again. Like I was with Call of Duty for a bit. But, Wildstar. But, yeah. yeah, that's what it would take. I don't know how uh, KB Mod Bro, uh, oh god, I'm blanking on his name, Budokai has done like two podcasts where he's done them for single games. <laughs> like for it's multiple just, episodes. Wow. It's two. One of them was like Mech Warrior Online too, yeah. wasn't it? Yeah, and one no, was, it was Hawken. He did Hawken. a Hawken Yeah, one was Hawken. Okay. Oh, wow. I was like, what the fuck? Like, not like shitting on him or Hawken, but it's just like, I don't know how you do that. You just like, can't. I, I, it's yeah. I, there, there are some other podcasts that I know of that it's just like, how do you, how do you just talk about that one thing for like an hour? A, a lot, a lot of them do end up uh, if they go past like a, a few episodes, it starts to kind of. They branch out into doing other things. It ma it yeah. makes a lot of sense to do something like that for a short period of time, like in a really early alpha through launch stage or something. Like right, that right, would make right. sense. Yeah. But once the game's out, like there's no the games. It's the same game. World of yeah, Warcraft's been I mean, the same game for seven years now. It's the same yeah. fucking game. Yeah. Totally. I mean, just like this podcast doesn't ever belabor any games or points like uh, <laughs> Dark Souls or Dark Souls <laughs> 2. But uh, you know. We can definitely throw stones in that category. I think we're fine. Yeah, but after the initial segment. No, you're right. You're right. Like, but we have. But there have been times. I will yeah. say during the, the the plane section, Dark Souls has been talked about for about forty five minutes. No well, joke. The main person doing that. Not on this <laughs> He's podcast. Not right on the now. podcast. I know. I'm just saying. <laughs> if people listen to this and be like, "You guys do," I'm just waiting for that email. Be like. I was a KB Mod subscriber and fan, but then when you called out other podcasts for doing the same thing you guys do, I'm just trying to cut that no, down. No, no, no. I just think that I just think what you guys just said about development cycle with that, like that's perfect. Yeah. Like a yeah. game like Hawken actually makes a ton of sense before it came out. It was changing so yeah. much, so yeah. much, so much iteration and so much. Yeah, because post launch, it's like okay, you get a pat. Like on some games, you get a patch every couple months. Like, yeah, Bioshock Infinite had its own podcast when it came out. Well, not like our own not like but our whole game section when that game out, that came out was just right. bioshock that day yeah, yeah. like <laughs> there are also uh examples of like studios that are making the games having their own podcast where they talk about you know the development process so i mean it makes sense in that for for those kinds of yeah, yeah i think things. i think like the new unreal when that Hits. That would be interesting to have a podcast. podcast. Like, I'll yeah. tell you, God bless whoever started the Brink podcast. 
RIP them. I'm sure it existed. Five hey guys, episodes, it's week it... 72 and we still don't know how to wall run. <laughs> <laughs> like it We're doesn't work. Sure like why the like fuck I'm jump, like all, I'm literally just running and jumping at the wall and it's still it's trying to make me vault over shit like Someone help me. It's I'm still. <laughs> it's literally an hour podcast and he's just begging people to help him. I should reinstall the game one of these days and see if anyone's playing because there's always like three or four servers that are full. Like it's huh. so weird. Even yeah. like, you know, five years after the fact that that piece of shit came out. <laughs> like it's kind of crazy. Um, all right. Next question. Daniel W. asks, when I was little, I used to have a recurring dream where I was stuck on a houseboat. <laughs> In the Hudson River with Peggy Hill. From no, I had, yeah. yeah, that's great. well. Godzilla circled around <laughs> under the surface. That is I terrifying. wish I could make this shit up, but it legitimately scared me. What do you think the dream means? All right, let's break this down. Hold on. Okay, I think you so... have a sexual attraction to Peggy Hill. Number one, like yeah, you would stuck love with her. her. Yeah, yeah, agreed. Yeah, you love to enter her. <laughs> enter, <laughs> yes. And I think I think the reason that the well, so I think the Godzilla represents your fear and trepidation about actually having sexual relations with the Godzilla yeah. represents Hank pursue. Hill. <laughs> what Hank Hill will turn into if he finds out that yeah. he's having sex right. with his wife. Oh so the God, fear baby. and the yeah, totally, totally. I see what you're saying. Like I think what it means is that you, as a child, in your brain, advertising, you knew that there was going to be a new Godzilla movie coming out. <laughs> at theaters near you at May 10th. Make sure you check it out, guys. Um, <laughs> by the way, we're also sponsored by the new Godzilla movie with God, Brian Cranston. I wish. In, yeah, in the I film. wish. Yo, anyway. Brian, come on, come on here. Talk about Godzilla. <laughs> we we need the, we need you. that money. <laughs> I actually inquired for the first time uh, yeah. for uh, licensing for a couple songs, just to see from a smaller artist. Yeah, and. Holy shit. It's a lot of money. It's a lot of fucking money, dude. It is ridiculous. Just, although just, although I can now you I know can't now even, you know how rock band feel. Like, I can't even found. imagine getting like Metallica or something. Yeah. Well Metallica doesn't want you to. No, but you but what I'm saying is like a band that's actually filling yeah. arenas, like yeah, totally. trying to get like even trying to get like a nine inch nail song or something. I wonder if they if if uh who who made Rock Band? I'm blanking on their name. Uh, but, 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 but like, I want to know like the stats for how much they have spent. Yeah, it's on Rock Band games. I and will just say getting this, songs. It's not if 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 I was the size of some other very large streamers here, I would have gone ahead and done it. To be yeah. honest, like it wasn't it wasn't so much that I was actually like jaw to the floor, but I was still like, this is hundreds of dollars. <laughs> so like, I mean. I don't want to say the exact amount, but yeah, people already said who the artist is in chat. It was Tycho. Yeah. Um, yeah. Like, Tycho, not huge. Like, not super duper small to where he would, like, want you to use his music just so he can get, you know, uh, some hits on, you know, Bandcamp or something like that. But, like, on the other hand, it's it's kind of... They were like, well, we can negotiate. <laughs> I was like, okay. <laughs> I'll maybe get back to you. About eight bucks. <laughs> How do you feel about ten dollars and we link the album? <laughs> yeah. Oh, but it was it was pretty crazy. Um but yeah. Uh I think this dream though, I think we are right about the sexual attraction to Peggy Hill. I think that is Totally beyond established. Uh, definitely sexual point. attraction. I, I do th- yeah, Godzilla could be Hank Hill. Godzilla I think Godzilla easy, is like the it. fear of STDs. That's what I feel. Mm-hmm. That Peggy Hill may be... See, I think we're thinking too narrow, though. I think Godzilla is, like, his overarching fear about the whole situation. Because, I mean, making love to someone like Peggy Hill <laughs> comes with a lot of uh, fear and trepidation. Obviously, she's an incredible, beautiful I woman. I think but as what watched, this means King of the Hill. is Peggy Hill is an animated character, right? Correct. Yes. God- Godzilla, popular movie in 1999, I believe, uh, which was followed by an animated series, Godzilla, the animated mm-hmm. series, obviously. So... All that could really mean is that you are sexually attracted to animated Godzilla. Wait. And you want to put it in his reptile butt. <laughs> I don't know how we got there. I, I mean, I was following you up until that, but, but possibly, man. It's possible. All, all mean, dreams are sexual. Let's be honest here. I don't know if that's true in we, we chat. Don't. Peggy Hill, I don't know if she has a hairy anus. I don't know that. But well, I don't know. Yeah. If it is, she it's mad. definitely bleached. <laughs> God. I don't think it would be bleached. I don't know why you would think it would be. 
Peggy is the kind of lady that just lets her butthole hair go out wild, like. I think gosh. Hank likes it like that, and he would have been totally. <laughs> Hank's fine a with dirty it. dude. Yeah. Yeah, come on, dude. Hank likes it dirty. Or, or is it a threesome? We haven't even gone into that. Uh, it's Godzilla, like the the dark third party here that Peggy may want involved, but. And maybe Daniel, you're a bisexual, and maybe maybe that's maybe it. That could totally be. That could be true. There it is. Godzilla is not a person, so I mean, you're into. It's his own sexuality. Is that Godzilla? Is no, like... you're a be- you're into bestiality. Oh, okay. So, I, we solved it. You're you're a bisexual who's into bestiality. Bestiality, totally. I think that's, and I think with that, you, you could probably... love dude dinosaur. You know reptilian. what's funny though is he had this as a kid, and what's so funny is we're probably telling him now what he found out. One day when he came to, as he was uh, pleasuring some animal. Literally, uh, as he came to. <laughs> well, no. Shit, what? But he was like, it all it all came to a, to a head, no pun intended. God damn it. <laughs> it came <laughs> to a head. Can't stop with the puns. So now, head. like, if he tells us that he is in the bestiality and he's a bisexual, that we're totally right. But I don't know if he'll confirm that on stream. I think, but. no, I think he's in chat. I think it is Sir Dick's a lot. You guys have opened my eyes so much. Well, I mean, you know, it's what we're here You're for. Welcome. Listen, if anyone else has any other dream tweets next week, I'm totally down to. We to should change the down. podcast name to Dream Council. <laughs> dream <laughs> Council. Yeah. By the way, we was... could have like we could have like a great like '80s spray paint banner, like in Dream Council. That was uh, a great. That was sent over the email. You can also submit longer form questions there, which can get more interesting, yeah. such as uh, this, to community at Caveman. Great question. Com. Though. Great question. So, thank you for saying that <laughs> in. Let us flex our psychological muscles, which we yeah. don't get to do very often, <laughs> since we're all trained psychologists. Oh, I'm uh, sorry. It's Daniel W. who asked that question. I'm sorry. Yes. I think I, I think I mixed. I think Daniel I said w. Hunter D. was the one who was the one to bestiality. That is not. Yeah, it's it Daniel, Daniel W. w. Yeah. Daniel W. Yeah. Okay. I can try. <laughs> um, Connor D. asks, if you could have a Telltale style game set in any universe, like a game world, television world, or person's life, such as APL, because nobody knows what the fuck he does. What, what? universe would it be? Um, APL's life would be a terrible Telltale game. Yeah, it'd be awful. God, no, or I would uh, like to have a Telltale game that just covers like an episode of Dan's life where he poops in the bus station. Yeah, <laughs> you like have to, to make choices. That, whole night. that entire evening seems just fantastic. What do you? What choices do you make? Cause you you got to yeah. tell me because I'm. I would make the out. choices to walk home and poop in the bus station definitely. <laughs> John wouldn't avoid that fate at all. He would just embrace it. Mine would be uh, you. The role is you're Clay Aiken, and you have okay. to make all the right choices so that you get specifically second place in season two of American Idol. <laughs> if you make if you make like the wrong choice and you get first place, then you just get assassinated. That's how it ends. That'd just be it. That's it. Good lord. Um, I'm trying oh, to think. man, what would be a good? Telltale. I mean, anything could be a good. I don't want a superhero game in Telltale though, because like I want you want to play and you want to have action in that. But how about Telltale makes a game that isn't like every other Telltale game? Yeah, but the question is, this is a game. How like about Telltale every other... stops printing money that they print? Like that's the stupidest thing I've ever heard you say. Go slap <laughs> yourself. Like, good lord, he he gets on. You get you're on this whole thing about Telltale. Like, stop making the same game. But they're good. Each the each the, the fucking Wolf Among Us is fantastic. You should play it. Wolf Among Us is much different. Oh really? They're all good, Scott. Good. Uh, well, the Wolf Among Us is very good. I've liked the I've liked the Walking Dead series too, but anyway. Jurassic Park. Walk- okay, that was their first one. In no, the- it wasn't. They Walking made Dead season future. two has been lackluster, to be completely honest. But Walking Dead season one was epic, and uh, Wolf Among Us is fucking amazing. Yeah, so I really far. like that so far. <clears throat> um, but yeah, what would be a good? I think being John Wilkes Booth uh, actually would be really interesting. Anything because like then... that would be real interesting. And then different, like the way it plays out, because like alter- alternate history, uh, an alternate history telltale. Just threw up in my mouth a little. Yeah, bit. I'm all right. Um, Whackman three two zero nine asks, "What's next for esports after considering events like the international and the League of Legends World Finals?" I'm not sure what you want here. Like, are you saying what's the next big thing in esports, or like where can they go from here? I mean, because League of Legends World Finals was in the fucking Staples Center, was it not? Like, yeah, yeah. Like it's fucking, pretty, that's pretty, pretty big. big. That's a major sports arena. Like, um, Wembley. You want them to fill out Wem- <laughs> Wembley Stadium? Yeah, or something? the O2 yeah, Stadium. Yeah. Like, oh shit! I think we went live and then not live. Yeah, again. we did for a second. I'm, I think it buffered. I'm not sure. We're it back did for me. Yeah, yeah, that's happened a few times recently. 
Um, so I mean, question, how could it be bigger? Uh, what's, question, or what's, what's he's not saying e-sports. what's bigger. Yeah, he's saying what's next. Yeah, considering the international and the League of Legends World Finals. Uh, I don't I mean, think it's TV. <laughs> no, I don't think it's TV no. at all. I just think it will continue to. to... It doesn't need to be TV. It shouldn't be TV. Yeah, but everybody, know. every like, well, not everybody, but it's always like there, there's always somebody pushing for it to be on TV, and it's like it's been there before. Not, yeah, yeah, it's been tried. there before, and it flopped. Like, does not does no one remember MLG on ESPN? Like, no. Okay, cool. We'll there you go, chat. Yeah. That's the question. What is next for esports after the international league? Um, I mean, I think the fan base will just continue to grow, and what's happening is like people expect. Once again, we talked about this before, but like. There's been really strong, obviously, this, these past couple of years have been really good for esports, but there's been incremental growth and positive steps, like, every year. It's hard to, like, people expect, like, I don't know, like, a switch to flip, but, I mean, look how big it's gotten now. I think it will just continue to be, to be something that is now just in the popular, like, vernacular and stuff like that. Like, people will know what yeah. esports is like, as, it, as it goes on. Because as younger kids get into it, like, we're into it, Dan. Hopefully your kids will be into it when they yeah. get older. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. And... I That'll think I think actually as much as I've I've made fun of this publicly already, but uh, COD being at the X Games, yeah. like that's actually pretty cool. Like in the grand scheme, like yeah. I don't like I don't condone <laughs> competitive Call of Duty, uh, especially right. Ghost, which had no search and destroy. But anyway, um, but that's just a cool thing. Yes, there's a lot of money involved, I'm sure, but Activision has a lot of money, but. Um, the whole the whole genre moving into stuff like that is cool. I yeah. think I think it would be cool. This might sound stupid, but I think it would be cool to see even an exhibition at an Olympics would be cool. Since nations are kind of pretty big, especially in the MOBA type scene. Yeah, I mean they're yep. Yeah, there's enough people playing that you could get a team from every country. Yeah. Totally. And, and it would be cool to see uh like an MLG yeah, I think Mark that that's a good idea an esports convention type thing. I think an event like an MLG but with pretty much everything that has a decent decently large scene at it in one place. So you'd have League, Dota, um COD, CS:GO, fighting games. Like Dreamhack comes close. I think Dreamhack probably comes the closest. Um, yeah. StarCraft 2 obviously in there as well. Um but like, I do agree about um, I can't do had a good point about the more yeah. money in the amateur scenes. I think just more money in general. Uh, I think, I think that'll come with time. As 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 um, you know, I think it's still like in its early stages. So you're seeing. I mean, but like people like look at LCS players and think. I mean, the the salaries they make and stuff like that are not are very at least from Riot and stuff like that aren't isn't very much. Obviously, they make more off of advertising and whatever yeah. the team brings in, they and, get a percentage of. And streaming of. themselves. And streaming yeah. themselves, right? But um, I do I do think as as like advertisers and stuff like that realize that it is a really good way to reach you know this really yeah. hard, untargetable demographic sometimes at least to advertisers. Yeah. Um, I think. I think that would be 18 important. Eighteen to yeah. thirty-five now. Eighteen yeah. to thirty-five. Yeah. I think it's all with expendable income. I think if DreamHack, yeah. I think DreamHack needs to be like even bigger than it is. Though, like the League of Legends World Finals being in the fucking Staples Center. Like, <laughs> I mean, there was a. Um, uh, I'm gonna pronounce it wrong again, but Katowice or Katowice that was in a stadium. Was not, that was in a stadium, I believe, um, as well for fucking Counter Strike. So, but I mean, yeah. you need prize pools like you need you need international prize pools. You need that for everything. I think that is the next like, the next step. Um, and Valve is doing that for CS:GO now. They're doing the packs you can buy. At uh, I think they'll probably be doing one for DreamHack. And um, you can call League a joke all you want. It's done a lot for all that stuff. Right. <laughs> like, um, yeah, that's what that's what I always find really shit. funny about people calling League a joke. Like, even if you don't like the game, you can't deny the the framework that they're setting in yeah, place I mean, for esports. Yeah. It's super professional, like, and the presentation yeah. for it is you know mm-hmm. top tier. So yeah. yeah, I just think it needs. I think all that stuff needs to be like it needs to be that all the time. <laughs> like totally. it can't be three events a year or something. Yeah, uh, and but those no, are for different um, games. Those are for different we games. We can't we so. refuse to use the word esports in our scenes, so yeah, you know, well, all right, we can't get all over right. that. I know the fighting games <laughs> they do fucking refuse. The Capcom Pro Tour is a huge step though. That's another big step in this stuff. Like I don't think everything necessarily has to be at that super high level of production, but I mean, like there seems to be more. 
more yeah. of everything, more of the grassroots stuff, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. like mid range stuff, hot, like super well, gigantic tournaments, like just, just everything. There needs to be more. Yeah, when you see Capcom doing this pro tour qualifying, every, almost every tournament that has, is not even that is considered a quote unquote major by fighting game players, but almost every tournament recently, the winner of the street fighter thing or the top 16 get points towards this pro tour thing. Top eight yeah. qualify for this tournament at the end of the year with a pretty big prize pool for the winner, um, which they kind of had last year, but they had no real system. There was no incentive to go, you know, compete at these tournaments. But now you get points for seeding. So, um, uh, yeah. And Anion, I hate, I hate to give Anion any credit for any fucking thing in the world, but he does. He raises a good point about the. I think he's saying this about the players in league are interesting. Mm -hmm. And and that is really, That's if you huge. look at the 24-7 sports cycle on ESPN, what fuels it? Drama, right? Yep. Drama, who's on what team, who said what, who's talking shit, who traded, just got yeah. arrested, who got traded. <laughs> yeah. If you want a 24-7 esports cycle, you, and I think eventually we may see, as it gets popular enough, we will see an ESPN-like for esports. I think, I think it can Even be. Even if I, it I don't starts think it, as a, a Twitch channel that's running longer than... One totally. show a week or something, you know. Exactly. Where, uh, where they really cover that, of that kind of stuff. Because the drama in, in real sports is so important to to keeping people it interested is. all the that's time. What, that was a big so deal when, uh, when Halo was big. Like, like trash talking and exactly. like people hating other people. It was like, like that was that was the best. Yeah, and that's yeah. with fighting games because this is, again, the most the biggest background that I have with esports is watching FGC. If that drama ever went away, it would take away everything from that scene right because like, so it needs to get bigger and it needs to get more professional it truly does but yeah. there needs to be fucking people popping off and, and totally yeah let, let, let the boys and <laughs> Ryan does a good job of, of like they they when they cut their videos they keep in clips of guys talking shit about each other and stuff like that because they know that'll fuel the fire yeah because like and it's good like we had sanford break his stick at the fucking new york weekly like a month ago broke his stick in rage playing this dude so <laughs> he challenged yeah. him to an exhibition at the tournament that was this weekend and if the the other dude lost, he had to smash his stick with a hammer. Sure enough, he lost. He had to smash yeah. his hundred and seventy dollar fight stick with a hammer. Yeah, right that's just awesome. The, like, yeah. that's awesome. If that ever goes away, that'll be bad. But there is a lot of stuff they could they could get better there. But yeah, league league and Dota are certainly paving the way. CS:GO is getting CS:GO production, depending on the stream, can yeah. be hit or miss. When yeah. it's good, it's fucking top notch. And the spectator client, as we've said i mean i think i think a lot of the growth like the future growth is going to come from csgo and other mm -hmm. games like that because the problem with dota and lol is that you have no idea what's going on unless you play that game you yeah, understand it's hard. you have no idea anybody can watch counter-strike my mother understands yeah. counter-strike i could sit my dad down yeah. and he'd be like okay that guy shot that guy if i if i set my dad down in front of dota 2 he'd be like oh all right there's oh, just the spells going off i don't know what is happening like yeah. I appreciate all of the skill involved in Dota and League. It's great, but I think the future and the growth, like from the from particularly older generations than ours, like the younger generations are not yeah, gonna have any problems. But if we want to get these forty year olds that are watching football and soccer and stuff now, yeah, to watch competitive gaming, it's gonna have to be something like Counter Strike or COD. Yeah, shoot, shooting someone in the face, yeah, yeah. Agreed. Plus, like, like you can see on that screen, not that you can't in Dota, but I can see on the screen during CS:GO when three dudes are dead. I can just glance and yeah. know that three guys. There's three skulls on that side. Okay, three of their five. Like you can just look and you can see. You can see all their health bars. Like I don't know. They've done a really good job of that. Um, we do. We need uh, the we need the attitude era. We need to get like uh, yeah. NWO, Scott Hall, Kevin Nash, Fucking, X Pac. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> look at WWE. Do it. <laughs> um, X Pac up in here. <laughs> one, two, one, two, three, kid, maybe pinning what a Razor. Fucking Ramon. weird part of that whole thing. <laughs> These dudes who went out to be huge stars, and then him. Um, <laughs> next question from I will follow Mike, who is a Rangers fan, so he can go fuck himself. But how many <laughs> grill pans does it take for APL to release his white penis honey? APL was Dude. super hyped today <laughs> on a grill Dude, pan. Dude, I, I gotta tell you, I people... no, no, no. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. What? what? <laughs> These are words that you used while we were in Target when we yes. walked down the aisle. What did I say? This is incredible. <laughs> right? I've never seen down so much pans. Pan aisle. <laughs> then I'm in my room putting my fucking <laughs> desk together. He comes and he says, take a picture of me laying down next to my pan. <laughs> Listen, I, this is what did it. I don't know. I have to. 
I have to live the rest of my fucking life knowing that. I will be on my deathbed, and I will regret taking that fucking picture. Listen, I, I for a long time, well, this is what happened. Rishi had a grill pan here that I was very fond of, and he took it with him in the move. Fair enough. God bless him. It's his pan. He can take it. It's but his took, pan. But he took the pan. And I used that pan for grilling and all kinds of cooking, and I was looking. I didn't think I'd be able to find something that was equivalent. And not only did I find something that was equivalent, he had a square one. This one is a 12-inch circular pan, uh, which is nice. But this pan also, let me tell you before you judge me, this pan came with a free set of tongs and a spatula, oh. both of which I needed this for no This was the game changer, charge. too, because he saw that pan. He's like, it's $40. I can't <gasps> it comes with a spatula and tongs. <laughs> And that changed it. And then I put it on my Target credit card, which I get 5% back on everything. So much fucking savings, man. I saved 258 on that goddamn pan, and I'm going to use it tonight to grill the chicken that you will eat. So before you keep fucking insulting me about the pan, you tell, you you have a, the, I think what I'm taking out of this conversation is that you have a Target credit card. <laughs> I, do. I was there when he got well, that fucking Why do you too? have that? Because they get 5% back. We have one, too. We have I one. It's worth it if you shop at Target a lot. I, I have, have children, I have, Scott. I have two Capital <laughs> One, or I have two credit cards. One's a Capital One and one's an Amex. And that's all I need. Well, let me you tell have too you. too many you have... credit cards if you have a fucking credit card from Target. Well, it's linked to your debit I only, card. I have, credit. Anyway. I have Discover and I have a Target no. credit card. That's the only two I have. God bless it. God bless it. God bless you know, these tongs, too. Savings, man. Dude, I'm going to be using those tongs to grill the nice steak I got the other day, too. It's going to be great. I'm gonna then flip Scott it. tried to tell me the science of how grill lines work. I like eat king the, crab legs. Lines cook yeah, you. John won, regardless of what you're cooking. <laughs> I ate king crab legs today, and it was delicious. <laughs> Damn, that <those> sound good. <laughs> took Damn. Blacklight Attacks parents to a $500 dinner last night. God. His parents deserve it for putting up with him for so many years. <laughs> All right, next question. APL. The answer to that is he already. It took takes one grill pan. It it's takes one, and I've already spun. Oh yeah, he called me a basic bitch. Who doesn't love grill lines? You fucks. <laughs> You're the most basic person because you tweeted about your fucking pan. Listen, I wear oh. it proudly. It Literally take- before he, before he tweeted it, I was sitting on the couch and he's like, "This is the most basic tweet I've ever constructed." <laughs> Confer- <laughs> confirmation in chat as a Target employee, they're really pretty sweet. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All right, next question is from Anion, who is a fucking basic bitch with the way he eats his fucking French fries. How do you eat your French fries with the ketchup on top, or like a goddamn barbarian, aka with the ketchup in like a dipping container or on the side? With the in a dipping thing. Yeah, of course. Why would it, you... it depends. Like it depends. Like if it, if I'm eating like chili cheese fries that are already smothered no. in a bunch of shit, I'm just pouring the ketchup on there. Uh, wait, but otherwise, I like ketchup on the... chili cheese fries. Oh yeah, I put ketchup on every kind of French fries. It's Ugh. delicious. You should try it. I thought that's it was gross. That's good with too. chili cheese fries. Are you crazy? Is it's it? That, I've yeah. never tried it, but that sounds gross. Weird. Yeah, it doesn't go well with the chili, but like ketchup and nacho cheese is the best shit ever. Yeah, it's good. No, oh, I put it to the side. I put it to the yeah. side, aka not. Because like then you don't get barbarian. ketchup on your fingers. Like you just. Yeah. Oh, I eat. I eat my fries with a fork most. See, of the it time. depends. Like if it, if it's salt, if it's regular salted French fries or whatever. I'm not. There may be a time where I don't want. Maybe I want to eat one that's naked without any ketchup on it, just to, you know, have some of that o- See what OG like. flavor. Yeah, totally. Like that's why I wouldn't do the whole thing in ketchup usually. <laughs> See, everyone in chat is at fries to the side. Dump the ketchup on the rest of the plate. That's right. Yeah. I will go fuck myself with my delicious fries that are really good because I didn't slather them with fucking ketchup like a barbarian. He eats his fries with a fork timeout. Is, is, Sometimes that I do, yeah. yeah. Like, no, chili cheese fries. Oh, chili. Like, no, no. Like yeah, yeah. Well, then then you, you kind of have to. <laughs> I'm no, talking about just straight up fries. I mean, you could eat them with your hands, but that's gross. So I'm a man. I, like I get ketchup all French over fries. my body. I pour <laughs> hot sauce on my French fries, and then I dip them in the ketchup if they're plain get French Get some fries. sriracha in that bitch? Mmm. Like, sriracha and French fries, not really. Never done sriracha that. Sriracha and tomato soup is incredible, by the way. Ooh, that yeah. sounds delicious. Incredible. I make homemade tomato soup, and it's dying. Yeah, I know Betsy, Betty Crocker. Oh, talk more about your fucking grill pan. I, I can't really talk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah the, the point here is you're wrong, Anion. 
by, by yeah, Slavin I think everyone's here. pretty much made it pretty you're, clear. You're wrong. And uh, there's... I don't want to kick a kick a good man when he's down. <laughs> I'm just kidding. He's not a good man. Kick him while you. <laughs> uh, got him. All right. Last question. Ben L asks, "What's your guys' opinion on all these streamers slash YouTube guys who, instead of telling jokes and being entertaining, <laughs> just scream and overreact to everything like they're a pootie pie wannabe?" Uh -huh. I feel like it's starting to become a problem. This is the thing we took most issue with. Yeah. I feel like it's starting to become a problem in the community. I'm getting really sick of some legitimately cool and entertaining people stooping so low just for views. It doesn't mention any names beyond PewDiePie. Hey. Like PewDiePie. Like, like, that guy doesn't give a fuck. He's making millions of dollars. But um, I feel like it's starting to become a problem in the yeah, community. It's, Man, that's I've been, been a while. It's been around for a while. That's, I've been doing that YouTube game. Yeah, my for a response bit. to that is LOL, you watch gaming videos on YouTube still. That's agreed. Uh, yeah. I agree with that. Um, um, that's, I mean, that's a pretty brave statement considering those numbers are still just going up and up. But, I mean, it's. There I you mean, go. If, you know. If you're in the 12 to 15 range, that's what you want Listen, to see. Listen, there is a market for you know what? It exi like if if you if you don't like it, don't watch it, but there is a there's a market for it. You don't have to and and there's what's the other thing that's interesting about this question is I think a lot of people think that if people do these kind of videos that they f that that those people think that they're making some kind of Mona Lisa shit. A lot of these guys who who will make these videos that you could say like that you're like, "Oh, they're just screaming or whatever." They don't they don't think it's Mona Lisa. It's just a means to an end, man, and if people watch it, they're not going to switch up the formula. Yeah, and that's just the way it it's is. It's like it's like it, when you turn on the TV and you get pissed that the Disney Channel exists. Yeah, that's actually it's not a good for point. you. That's yeah, a good it's analogy. It's not for you. Like go like it's like ah oh, fucking I hate that MTV is the way that it is. Okay, watch fucking Discovery Channel or HBO. Like it's it's just different stuff for different people. Like when you get down to it, it can yeah. piss you off because of the quality or the content. It doesn't really matter, but it's it's not for you clearly. No, I'm not defending anything. I think uh, I think the Look. screaming thing can be can be totally like the screaming thing can be totally overdone. The reason that someone's saying because I scream at Outlast and Daylight, right? Because I'm totally terrified. I think if it comes from a place that's clearly manufactured, then I think that'll show pretty quick. I think people a lot of yeah, times are on that. Again, that's again, maybe not the younger kids. I think again, we get, like Nick, like, like Nick said though, like then it's not for you. Totally, like that guy not. knows what he's I like. Pootie Pie, dude. Uh, credit where credit is due. Guy has a formula. He knows what he's doing. It fucking works. Like, <laughs> PewDiePie deserves your respect because that, and that guy that actually deserves your respect. He grinded the fuck out of YouTube. Yeah, like I, 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 I was subscribed to that dude when he was like nothing, and he he has not changed. Like that is, yeah, he's that. never stopped doing. Yeah. It. That's been that the is thing. him. That is his thing. It is actually like, in terms of quality, it's gotten so much better. Like, yeah, he edits the he edits all of his videos. Like that dude is insane. Yeah, what I mean, you should be worried about isn't the necessarily the type of video because like it should be the quality. You should be upset by bad, yes, poor that quality upset you. videos of screaming. Like yeah, it, well you should be like that for for anything really. It should be this is a poor quality video. It sh you should just improve. Thank you. Yeah, that's I mean that's that's the big difference. It's not it's not for you. So in totally. some ways, yeah, I guess I guess if I want to take the jealous angle, yeah, I wish I was that big, but no, I like. But it's not for me. I don't know. It's it's not targeting me. I have no problem. I have no problem with what PewDiePie does. Like I have no problem with it at all. I don't watch his videos. Yeah, it's a bit ridiculous that every single one of those types of videos is the only thing on the front page of my YouTube thing when I log in. But like like in the suggested or whatever. But I don't like I don't care. I don't click on any of them. So why <laughs> why do I care? If you like, don't it, yeah, if you don't want to watch, you know, don't watch them. And they're not like I said, and they're not they're not for you. And you don't have to like once again. Vote. I don't know <laughs> about like it's such a subjective it's just such a subjective thing. Like what really is going to annoy someone else may not annoy me, but really at the end of the day like if you're spending a lot of time and getting all worked up about it, then you're thinking way too hard about it. If you don't like it, just fucking don't pay attention. I vote, Obviously, if something's like you know, legitimately harmful, then right. obviously you should have about it, but it's not really hurting anyone. It's vote like, with your view. Like, there you, if you go. Don't see it, then vote don't fucking view. watch I mean, it. Like, also, like, as much as you can hate PewDiePie for what he, he makes and whatever, like, he has made YouTube gaming more mainstream. It's more, it's in more people's eyes, so it's becoming more of a normal thing. So, I mean, is that really hurting you? It's making what you do or watch look, dude. More prevalent. To I made a video else. called the Gay Surfertage. 
And you yeah. made a video called the Turlet Taj. That's true. Both of those have double digit thousands of views. <laughs> people should people should be upset about Turletage. <laughs> Turletage should be where it is. Yeah, exactly. Like that is a poor quality video. <laughs> well, Sitting I mean, on the turlet. In terms Sitting of production, the there was terrible. more work put There's into no that than into the Gay Surfer Dodge. Let me tell you that <laughs> right now, because I don't know what I'm doing in video editing programs. So I just yeah. <laughs> and totally like I, I, the other thing too is like a lot of these like. Uh, the whole idea of YouTube becoming like it's replacing Saturday morning cartoons for for children nowadays, yeah. right? Or young kids. So these people latch on to you, you know you're very impressionable young age. So if you're shown a YouTube channel that you like or someone that you think is funny, uh, you are going to just like whatever your favorite cartoon or whatever else. You weren't very objective. You weren't sitting there like, wow, the plot in Batman really took a shit. <laughs> like you're 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 enjoying the entire experience. Like and it's the same yeah. thing with a lot of these guys who have these who have these younger viewers. Like it's just not it's you know what I mean. It's not necessarily made for you, and it, they're going to have that kind of rabid um, fan base. And now, but see what the difference is with Batman. We didn't have a voice. Like we couldn't leave comments. These young children can leave their comments and then uh, yeah, form their little posse, think, which is a little different. I think if you're going to look at something that is 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 harmful to this yeah. to this medium, I think. One thing that's harmful, and we talked about it when Linz was on here, is I think like the borderline, like, cam girl stuff. Well, that totally. stuff is harmful. Oh, yeah. I think. Is, I think it's it. actually harmful to other female streamers and and YouTubers mm -hmm. who want to do that stuff because it it can paint with a broad brush in a bad way. Um, but that stuff I think is more, quote unquote, harmful um, or something to be upset about than you know some dude screaming into a mic faking that he's scared like right. that's whatever um i think a big thing to watch and we have this question i think it was last week um is videos that or videos uh games that are being made for twitch slash youtube specifically because there's going to be an awful lot of shit it's coming. <laughs> it's come out. It's coming. Yeah, and it is coming. It's it's I mean they're they're yeah. plenty out it's there gonna, already, but it yeah. is coming. It is gonna be bad. I it's gonna I think it's gonna be worse than early access. Well, I mean, it depends on how much you hate early yeah. access shit, but I really dude, don't like early dude, access. I don't hate Casey Tron at all. She is the best troll I think I've ever seen in my life. She hangs on to that with every shred of her being, and it's kind of awesome. <laughs> like she yeah. does not give up the I don't act know for how one someone... second. I don't know how someone does that, to be She's honest. She's dedicated, you can say that. You know what Casey is? Casey she John has a is? character, and she, she lives it. She is a heel in wrestling. That's what she is. That's how you have to look at this. If you've never watched wrestling, you, you need to actually watch wrestling sometime, because like, the way they do things is the exact way to look mm. at this. It's all for entertainment, and the people right. who are bad guys in wrestling are over-the-fucking-top bad guys, and the yeah. good guys are over-the-top good guys. Like, And it's a battle between, you know... <laughs> those two things like there is it's a good analogy there yeah. is a currently a uh a faction in wwe i don't even know if you can call it a faction but i guess they were a tag team called the real americans and their whole thing was hating illegal immigrants no joke like <laughs> that was their whole thing so they were obviously hated by fucking right. everybody so they yeah. they played that up as much as they can like and they're hated by everyone and they're heel to the max and it's like it's pretty awesome. Like, like in that, you know, it's an act in wrestling, but Casey Tron's the same way though. She's like, she's playing that character and she's doing it super well. Like, and actually she is hilarious. A lot of the, like with it sometimes because the viewers, some of those viewers do not get it. <laughs> they do That's what always it. baffles me. If I ever go in there and read the chat, it's like, how are they still not getting that? This is a troll. Like, it's just insane. It's yeah. crazy. So I mean it's the it's it's the same thing and you can I, I, that's how I look at it with her, um, but yeah, so that is it. There we go. For the podcast this week we ended up at nearly nearly two hours even though only four of us. I miss Game of Thrones, motherfuckers. Well, you know that that playback, man. <laughs> playback. I do. It's already um, on on demand. It's on on demand right away. <laughs> nice. And. Uh, Shout outs to two hit him quit him. Happy birthday. It was his birthday. Oh yeah, no. was twenty minutes Happy ago. Happy birthday. How old? Twenty one. Twenty one. I don't know. He tweeted. Oh, I did not I don't fucking know. How old are you? <laughs> um, <laughs> How old? Let us know in the chat. 
Scan but, uh, your birth certificate 18. and post it. <laughs> if you're 18, call me. Hello? You can uh, <laughs> you can follow Cape Mod on Twitter at Cape Mod Gaming. You can follow all of us on Twitter. All our Twitters are on the screen at APL Fisher, at NFEN, at KB Mod John, and at Infinite Sad with two Ds. Hopefully, I'll get Nibnop soon. Dude from Holland hasn't got back to me yet. <laughs> um, the dream, but, though. It's a lot. Yeah, the you dream. <laughs> and make sure you follow us here on Twitch. We're only 45 followers from 10,000. So uh, follow us here on Twitch. And uh, we will be live again tomorrow night. I'm going to be playing some Child of Light, continuing that game. And, uh, yeah. And Boss Jedi Zohan will be live tomorrow at noon with more Mass Effect 2 as he continues that series. Uh, so that's when we'll be live again this week. And we're live every day, of course, on this channel. So give us a follow. Oh, excuse me. And uh, check out all the links below the stream, and we'll be back next week. Later, bros. All righty. See you guys.